got most of that right. Uh, <laughs> not all of it. He was my kindergarten teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and so one of the reasons I like the competition with me is not only do they Bob and I go back a long way, I go back a long way with many of the faces I've seen. It's always a pleasure to talk about it. So let me, let me get into the uh, talk. It will be, actually, not always true in economics, it will be about the title. And I'm going to look at the effects of childhood health on major SES outcomes later in life and put equal emphasis, most of the uh, literature on linking early life events to uh, later life uh, health and SES outcomes has been on the physical health side with the Bach hypothesis being one of the main emphasis for that. But I'm also going to give equal play here to physical as well as mental health issues going forward. The SES measures that I'll use are uh, quite expansive and, and include education, income, work, and marriage, also wealth. I'm going to also uh, look at two uh, countries, uh, this analysis, both America and Britain. So, the American study, I'm going to use a somewhat obscure American panel where, what I'll tell you about it, <laughs> family effects can be controlled because siblings exist in the data, and then a much more uh, well-known and quite famous British uh, COLA panel, uh, one of the British COLA panels in 1958 panel. The American data is the panel study of income dynamics, the CSW, <coughs> if you may be familiar. It is by far, in my view, the best panel data in economics that has ever existed. It started in late 60s, and we have 40 years of data on, economic data on the respondents. One of the unique features of CSIB, um, I don't know if somebody should get a big award for this. Morgan, I should uh, right, let him get it then. Because it was not one of the, People didn't think about it much when it first started, but the, the consequence for CSID and for research is going on it is that not only were the original CSID respondents uh, going to be followed uh, as the panel uh, went on, but anyone, anyone in the immediate family, like the children of the CSID respondents in 1967, they, when they became adults, would be followed as well, their siblings would be followed, any new children born into the family would be followed. So they had a family design that allowed the kind of work that you know, for 30, 40 years later that I'm going to talk about. And PSID, as we all know, is famous as an economic data set with high quality measurement of work, income, and wealth. Since 1999, this is when I was on the PSID uh, board, and chairman board actually, there, there was always some limited information available on health, but it was limited, and, and it was not, PSID was not very often used as a health data set, maybe for disability, but not uh, for much else. Starting in 1999, and, uh, and it's probably a little known fact, and I wrote the first mod health module that went on the PSID because there was no one in the PSID that yeah, knew much about health, but they wanted to do it, so I said, okay. And I basically took it from the uh, HRS. We added information for general health status and the prevalence and incidence of chronic and weak conditions that the panel members had, and a standard list of health behaviors, smoking, uh, drinking, That feature, and sort of what I told you about, and that particular feature, and another one I'm about to tell you about, dictates the kind of sample that I will use to, to do this analysis. First, since there's no health information until 1999, you had to be in the PSID in 1999 to be in my analysis. Second, since I'm looking at the consequences of what happens to you during childhood on later life events, you had to be 
a child born to the original PSID family member that was less than 16 years old in 1968, or subsequently born to those families and have gone out to the labor market and be 25 years old by 2005. So these are children born between the ages 1952 and 1974, and I could follow them into
very standard characteristics, um, the quadratic in age, <coughs> race, ethnicity, gender control, background characteristics of your parents, your father and mother, number of siblings, very standard list of variables. And they all behave the way you would expect and they're not particularly of interest in this talk, uh, except for the one I've isolated in yellow, the first one I've isolated in yellow, which is the summary variable I told you about. How is your health up to age eight, uh, 16 on this scale? And this, uh, so a one means your health was good while you were a child, good, very good or excellent. <coughs> if that were the case, you know, this is a standard OLS model, you get about a third of the year extra school associated with this. A third of the year extra school. If you read the uh, literature on this, the schooling is very little that most studies have. This is about the, the order of magnitude in those studies as well. So if it's going to the English cohort studies and the case and the case studies, they're getting about a third of the year of school. One, alongside this, OLS model, I have what we call, what I'm calling the fixed effects model, and that is the within sibling uh, variant of this model. So looking at the difference between two siblings in a PSIV family. What we'd normally expect, of course, is since there are things associated with the family that may make one child have more education, another child have more education, also things are positive, we would expect the coefficient to be depressed somewhat on the OLS because the correlated unobserved family effects have a positive bias attached to them. And that is essentially, that's what we find. So now the effect of being, you being in good childhood health when your brother or sister was not leads to about a tenth of the year of school. Again, a lot of the uh, economic uh, literature on the effects of childhood health have in fact viewed, taken because it's available, education as a primary SES outcome. <coughs> that is a very small effect in this. A tenth of the year of schooling, it may not be, it's not as significant here, that, that might be a power issue, but it's not a big, it's not a big effect. About a tenth of the year of schooling. So now I want to go to an, another SES outcome, log of your household income, this non zero income that your spouse is in, in 1999. Again, you get everything else except what's in yellow, that's the only uh, coefficient of interest. It's a 13% increase in your, in the OLS variant of the model, a 13% increase in your household income by being in good childhood health at 16. And that's not a trivial effect. That's real money. And I'll show you in a second how much real money that really is. However, if we now go from the OLS variant to the fixed effect variant, the coefficient doesn't become smaller, it actually becomes larger. It's now a 24%, you have 24% higher household income in 1999 if you're in good health compared to your sibling who is not in good health. That is becoming an even bigger one of the, uh, I used to teach one of the stories I would tell the students is that one of the things economics always taught us well is how to take a small number and make it look really, really big. They also taught us how to go the other way as a big number. 24% in large is not a small number. One issue then is one that we're going to talk about is why does the effect actually become bigger instead of smaller? Now, um, since most of us, when we go to shopping and stuff like that, we don't ask the price of logs or these other metrics. I want to use, convert that uh, percent change into how much dollars it is. So the OLS variant is about a little less than $6,000 extra income in one year. With this similar effect, it's $10,000 extra income 
family income between 1999, uh, being the first child to That's what the um, curvature of this looks like over the life cycle. Uh, it starts out at age, and this is actually turns out to be important. I didn't realize it at the time. The effect is $7,500 at the get-go, age 25. So you're starting out with an initial impact of being with childhood health, which is not trivial, $7,500. It expands over time uh, throughout the rest of life up to age 60. The $10,000, the dollar one, is the midpoint of the wave, which is where the best kind of stuff. So there's a big initial impact right at the beginning of adulthood, which becomes larger over time. Jim, that's the fixed effect estimate? Or is it yeah, that's the fixed effect estimate. <coughs> Here's how we make big numbers. If I take the present value of the, <coughs> the typical average person's um, extra income from being in good childhood health over the rest of his life, that comes to a little less than $400,000 extra income over your lifetime in the present value terms. Not a small number at all. One, one question that comes up then is what are the uh, mechanisms by which the effects operate? One of the uh, mechanisms is it affects your ability to, to earn money in, in the labor market. The blue in this, the same kind of models created these uh, numbers on these on the front of the model these simple charts, the within sibling effect on earnings, your own earnings alone, is $8,000. The family income effect is $10,000. So it's not just what it does to you, uh, because that's a, a large part, but not all of the decrement in the family's um, income. But it's a large part of the decrement in the family income. The part of the decrement is coming from lower income of your spouse. So one of the ways that um, so in, in the larger the large impact on your own earnings is a lot of that is coming through the ability to work. So the within sibling effect on this work in a year is four weeks a month. You work a month less in a year if you were had poor childhood health. Back to I'm going to come on that next okay. slide. The spouse. I thought it was the reverse, but the next slide is the spouse, oh, okay. and then we can deal with it. Most of this four weeks is on the expensive margin of whether you work at all. This is the average effect of the month. But a lot of people who had poor childhood health during ages up to age 16 have difficulty engaging in the labor market, and that's reducing their earnings and reducing their family income. Now, I thought you were surprised. The correlation in spousal childhood health is 0.34. That is, you tend to marry. Uh, if you were in poor childhood health, you tend to marry someone who was also themselves in poor childhood health. And you're, if I regress the spouse's earnings against your childhood health, your spouse earns $2,367 less because you were in poor health at the time. So that looks very much like a marriage market mechanism. That's one of the things that happen. Uh, one of the costs of having poor health as a child is you don't speak, as the economists would say, you don't speak quite so well as a marriage person. You talk that way. And that's contributing to the differences in this. So one issue which I skipped over when I presented the results, but I think it's an interesting issue, is since we expect uh, when we do 
within siblings is modeled, we normally expect coefficients to be dependable. But in, in this application, the coefficient is actually becoming bigger rather than smaller. And so, uh, it, it, with one exception, and the exception is education. Education behaves in a traditional way and becomes smaller rather than bigger. So, uh, why would this be? So, in the you take education first, this is the Becker Fulton uh, model, basically. If, if there's a low correlation in the price of education and childhood health, that is, it's no more costly to educate a ill child and a well child, then uh, you're not going to get any efficiency reasons to invest more in one than another. And if parents are altruistic, equally altruistic to all their children, what they will tend to do is compensate for any, to the extent they can, for any poor outcome on one child by giving, helping them out, putting more time into them. And that will make the differences smaller. When you come to the, these other uh, things that are using the childhood health scale, uh, the, the, this is a scale where, that you're asked to report your health on this next one down to four scale. The answer is going to depend on two things. What your real health was like as a child, or even as an adult, but I'll use the application as a child, and where you place your subjective scale. So I might be really hard, so you would have to be in idyllic health before I would ever call you excellent. Someone else like Bob might be much softer on this sort of thing and use, uh, you know, oh, okay, you got sick, you had your one replacement, and now you basically were okay. So the, the answer that people give depends on both things, what their actual health was like and what scales they use to demarcate these different categories of excellence that are being considered by the board. These scales come from someplace. One of the places they probably come from is your family and the use of language to describe these categories. It, it is, I think, probably true that people within the same family share, to some extent, the same scale. So that when you look at differences between, within a family, you're getting more signal about what the real health conditions were than when you look at the population at large, which includes both single signals of real health, but also differences in thresholds, which do not predict anything. And by looking within family, uh, you're getting more of a real signal about what the health uh, uh, conditions of the were, and if that's true, that would be a rationale for these effects to become strong. Now I want to actually get to what this talk is about. And that's the, this is a general index about your health. And what, how, would, how would you describe your health um, as a child? We also have the actual conditions, chronic diseases that they might have had. We also have a set of um, psychological problems that existed before age 17 in the same in the same history. This is work co-authored with John McMahon, medical student. And the psychological problems include depression, drug and alcohol problems, and other psychological problems. And in, in this component, I'm going to do the same thing I did for the general uh, categorization of health. I'm going to control for the unreserved family effects by using uh, within siblings. But I'm also going to control for the coexistence. One, one of the things that might have happened to children, so you might have been depressed, you might have had psychological problems because you were ill. And these illnesses are what led to you not feeling so positive about your life. So I'm going to show you models that control for and don't control for the coexistence of childhood physical illnesses. In the uh, work that I've done um, on uh, trying to uh, look at this retrospective scale, they do match, as I said before, the contemporaneous prevalence for recent cohorts in, in, this, in these psychological disorders as well. If you look at what the prevalence were among these people, they were the prevalence is about the right prevalence is report at the time. I'm going to look at the array of childhood health outcomes again. As you 
education, family income, earning useful to know. So you can see there are no numbers up there. Uh, and the reason there are no numbers is I want to, because I'm only going to report the coefficients for the uh, child group health. I just want to emphasize that we are controlling for a lot of other things that we would normally control for, but I'm just now putting them, displaying them on the PowerPoint. There's an age part where I have gender, race, Hispanic, the same things that I've showed you before, all being controlled for these models as well, um, but I'm just going to show you the coefficients on child health. Okay, so again, two sets of estimates. The OLS estimate and the within sibling estimate, and an estimate with just the family background variables, and an estimate that has those family background variables, but then also adds the, the list of the 14 physical uh, uh, problems that may have existed during the session. And then we start out with education. Okay, so uh, this is the first one here is there any psych psychological problem as a child? Could be depression, could be uh, drug or alcohol abuse or any other problem. <coughs> and the effect on education, if again, was negative, as we had discussed, a little larger than what we saw before, actually, about uh, half a year. Once again, it attenuates if we do the fixed effect estimates, just as it did before, as we saw for the overall index. If we put in the childhood health, the physical health problems, it has no impact at all on this estimate. So this does not look like any of these psychological health problems do not look like it appears to be picking up the something to do with the physical illnesses that these people may have had when they were children. It's really focused on the psychological And if I now go to family income, 26% was sort of similar to what I told you about before. 26% lower family income, not very different, again, in the, in the fixed effect <coughs> The childhood health problems, if I add the physical health problems, it diminishes this effect a little bit, but most of it is concentrated on the psychological dimension, very little bit. Physical health dimension contributes on the child. So it's not that they don't have an effect on later. We know they have an effect. Now we're going to be talking about that. But they have an effect that is considerably small and also way delayed in life. So you don't get, I mean, one of the things about the psychological dimension <coughs> is you get the impact at the get go. And you get the physical health impact much later in life, say at age 40 or 50, not at age 25. So it's that combination of a much larger impact on your SDS and an impact on your SDS that's there from the very beginning that makes the uh, psychological dimension so much more important than the okay. in, in its impact on the family's life later. But these other same issues, this is a more of a Much less of a scale. 
slide, the probability of being married is reduced by 10 percentage points by poor childhood um, psychological problems. So childhood and then persons who do marry, if you do get married, your spouse has a low earning capacity. <coughs> So now I'm going to take these numbers, this 300,000 lifetime reduction in family income, I think is actually born. If I take the prevalence rate of these uh, psychological disorders during childhood and estimate what the lifetime effects are for these people, all the people affected, currently right now in the United States, they come up with a $2 trillion loss, economic loss, because of this the presence, the presence of childhood psychological problems. This is clearly an understatement, but this is only on the economic dimension. We know that uh, a lot of the cost of having uh, psychological problems, either as a adult or as a child, but especially as a child, is a non-monetary cost to your family members and your friends and other people and are troubled by your troubled life. And so this, this I would view as a substantial underestimate of the real cost of these illnesses during childhood, but just taking it, you know, playing the pure economic uh, game, it's still a lot of money. What was the prevalence, I'm trying to compare this to the other number uh, looking around in the 300 earlier, what was the prevalence of this for their health, roughly? So this is 10% for psychological and compared with the... Uh, that was one time. Well, you're going to have a lot of people. You're going to have a lot of people. Yeah. What? Right. Right. But so, if all of them. Oh, it's not. It's not added. Yeah. But if all of them were both, then, then this counts for about half of the earlier. Uh, I think it's more than half. I think it's more than half. The other one is Cleveland. Right. But this, this is this is this is three hundred thousand versus three hundred eighty thousand. So it's more like three right, percent. Right, right. That's it's right. more like three eighty percent. Right. Eighty percent of the total cost would be in the psychological dimension. What? Why did it? Excuse me. You showed the you, numbers. Excuse me. I forget your name. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> um, are, you, are you going to show the numbers for those who have physical problems and don't have psychological? I'm going to show them to the other side. That's what I thought. Okay. Thank you. What am I doing? Often 
collected or self-employed, but also collected from uh, doctors and other medical consumers. We observed their earnings, their family income, the same sort of uh, variables we have in the PSOD. Uh, we ob observed their developmental and physical performance. We know a lot about the, the um, households in which they were brought up and the circumstances that existed when they were brought up. So psychological problems of a new form outside the scope of this study. Uh, but they were evaluated, evaluated age 7, 11, and 16 for emotional maladjustment, any psychological or psychiatric treatment, and whether they had been seen by a psychiatrist. Now I'm going to do the same, there, there were no siblings here, so I can't uh, parallel the sibling analysis I did in PSID, but if you remember, the within sibling effects in the PSID on the psychological dimension weren't all that different than the OLS effects. So you didn't see uh, big differences in those estimates. So we asked about uh, these other prevalences, is it you know, much, very much the same level as existed in the PSID retrospectively. These are the three ages of the, the all now who are parents. It kind of goes up a little higher toward the adolescent years. About uh, one, one in ten of these kids experience some psychological disorder during their childhood. Here's the uh, chart that people were, um, with a couple of caveats that people were mentioning before on this, um, with all the physical illnesses as well as the psychological. <coughs> the, the red line uh, is the psychological disorder prevalence, 10%. The others are all the physical uh, health uh, issues that occur in the data, but the uh, infectious diseases of course are both in, in this age group, either in PSID or in any data set, if you get 50 and over, then everyone has these or everyone has mumps, or everyone has different types, formal so on. So you get prevalences on the infectious diseases of about 90 percent And you see all the others. And you, I added them all up, and you get a pretty high prevalence. One of the uh, things, and you know, I could take any one of these, let's see, I'll take a speech defect. So the, the prevalence of speech defects in this data is about uh, 17 percent, I think, something like that, and as appropriate to almost one in five English children having a speech defect. When I saw that, my question was, are you counting every child who has speech with an American accent as <laughs> a speech defect? <laughs> Not that bad. But this is using, the, for, for many of these, especially those at the top, the eyes, the headaches, the skin, skin abnormalities, speech defects, the hearing defects, this is using a very low threshold. Any issue along along that dimension is being counted. The data allows, and I'll uh, get into that later. This work is being done, by the way, with uh, Professor Goodman and the Institute for Critical Studies in London. Uh, it allows demarcation of these uh, diseases into severity. And the next thing I'm going to do is start looking at that. So the prevalences in terms of severity of, of these, especially at the top, the eyes and the ears. And the speech will be much, much lower. But we'll just take this data as it is right now. We have all the schedule illness and the psychological disorder. Okay, so what one of the, and this is actually very preliminary, talking to Bob and Kate about doing something like this in the PSID as well. I'm saying, you know, here, here's, we're looking, we're just, there's nothing really plausible about anything I've said. Child had a psychological problem during their childhood. I haven't said why. I don't know why. And but the, one of the potentials of these data sets, and this is what we're going to try to add this information into the PSRD, is also looking at why these problems <coughs> develop. What is it about their life? And it's probably going to be their family life, or their school life, or their friendship network that led to some children having psychological disorders 
Doesn't the fact that the family takes effect don't change these estimates? Suggest that that's, well, I guess it doesn't. It, but it, does, it doesn't, it suggests that they, that the causal mechanism isn't these yeah, families. Yeah, one of the things, it could, for example, the same family life could have, not all families, but could have a much bigger impact on one child, even if it was a common effect, than the other. So you're going to see the consequence in a child that you will not see in the other child, even though it's the same, the same dosage, for example. You see the term quality. But in the British data, I've already started doing that. That's one reason to sort of think about what sort of questions should be asking the British group. So what effect, what has no effect on your children's psychological state of mind? Hmm. The first law of marriage. First law of marriage, your age, parents' education, whether you're high SES or low SES, doesn't matter. Whether you or your spouse read books to your children, read newspapers, show an interest in your child's education. All the things we worry about. <laughs> what does matter? Low birth weights matter. Early illnesses do matter. They have an effect, even though the effect is not just a derivative of those. People uh, with, who have where there's close uh, spacing of children within two years, being an only child, uh, other uh, developmental, uh, someone asked a question about developmental uh, issues, uh, not walking by 1.5, not speaking by two, and difficulties, obviously, difficulties in family life, they're all predictive of having these psychological disorders while your children in the British public So I'm gonna use the same term, so I'm, as I did before, I'm controlling for all sorts of other things. And I'm just not showing it. All the standard variables are being controlled. I just want to isolate what the impact of childhood psychological problems are before, by age 16, on your income and SES status as an adult. And just hope, concentrate on those uh, dimensions, okay? And so what I'm putting out first is Large family income. And it's a very, it's not identical, but it's a very similar pattern to what uh, we found as we found in America. A big initial effect 11% lower family income at age 23. That does grow. It grows even less in Britain than it did in the United States. So the initial effect and the final effect at age 50 of 17%. So there's a big initial impact that grows somewhat over life. And the same thing for large hourly wages. Again, a lot of the effect right at the get-go and then um, growing slightly over time. The wage growth effects you can see are very small. The size means statistical significance, so all these things are significant at the 1% level. probability you're employed to get is very similar to what we found in America. Eight, uh, initially, an 8%, 9% lower probability of being employed. Now that doesn't change very much over life. The probability you're going to have or keep a partner is lower if you have these childhood disorders, and your partner is less likely to work. Okay? So it's looking like the, the, the relatively similar order of magnitude effect and similar pathways, a little more of the initial effect of being the dominant effect in Britain than the US. And it's important to understand that here, all these measures of childhood psychological problems are prospective. And in the PSAD, they have to be retrospective. But, so they're, they're, you know, both around 10%, but they're obviously Once I get, and again, the, the uh, British cohort part of this is more recent analysis than the PSID part, I can distinguish in the British cohort between a diagnosed psychiatric problem and a self-reported 
or as a parent, the parents are the alternative uh, person. Uh, the self-report by the parent and a diagnosis of child neglect by the You can just say, I have done that. So now I'm going to look, these are the uh, estimates for why family income on the psychological side, and I want to compare them to uh, the childhood physical some wallets is by putting in the adult mental and physical health uh, conditions and that reduces the prohibition a lot but that's what you don't want. You could think that you might want to reverse the order of the cognitive and social skills and education because you could have put education in first. Yeah. Yeah no, but I know I've done that. That one I've done. I haven't reversed because education is where I would start. Yeah, 
I've been doing that since the Great Depression. Adult health. Adult income and adult health. That's different than adult income and adult yeah. health. Although, again, it's because this is the pathway that I'm not doing. Okay. Let's say the only reason, let's, and it's not true because we see there's something left over for childhood health, even if I can set up for adult health. Because this year, this year, my adult health problem at age, let's say, 850, I could call for that and get a much smaller estimate. The impact of this childhood health, even if I was in good psychological health at age 50, I was not as likely to be of good psychological health at all previous age. And so childhood health will have an impact because yeah. it impacts me all along my life. And, and but some of it's captured in the condition of the moment and yeah. as part of its accumulation of time up to this moment. I agree with that, but I mean, uh, jobs loss is going to impact public health so much like mental health. Yeah, so there are, right. so, so if I put in, so if I that, put I in, the interpretation of what? Uh, I don't know how to interpret the bottom row. That's why I'm not <laughs> That's why I'm only it doing has mental health in it. I know, but I'm only doing in all those other estimates. That's why I didn't right. put it in. Right, okay. So what I'm saying here is if, if I then said this is to show the fact that it's the pathway is primarily the psychological disorders of the subject, that, that would not give me the right number for the financial number. Studies, when I remember looking at studies of economic mobility, and a lot of it, the topic has changed. It depends on how you measure mobility, and it's not all that different. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think it's, uh, again, a little uh, put off by the aristocracy part of it. Most of the people I work with work in the very modest. These are obviously universities. Solon's <laughs> estimates are similar for the Britain and the U.S. So that might be where I'm going to start to show you. But I don't think it's going to be similar. And this is the same material showing the same thing if you just combine it to hourly wage. And hourly wage is interesting because you've taken some of the uh, labor supply effect out. And human capital clearly skills at work are clearly being affected. But these other um, dimensions of skills are not the primary mechanisms by which psychological disorders occur. So when we come to my conclusion, and this is the, uh, you know, come to this conclusion somewhat slowly, not why, why I went into these studies, but I was really interested in the physical health. I think uh, partly as a um, consequence of including my own fascination with Parker that hypothesis and the richest support of research surrounding that hypothesis. We focused um, our interest on the um, um, later life uh, consequences of early life conditions. We focused that on physical responses of children. And I think one consequence of that, I think, is we forgot <laughs> somewhat in older people. Which, in which you, you, you partly uh, came from this university, that the mental health disorders that children have, or at least in terms of their economic impact on the rest of their lives, are much more important than the physical health conditions that children have. Much more important. It's not even close to it. The estimated 
effect in America and Britain on the mockery post, the pathways looked similar, the size of the effects looked similar, and it looked like work and marriage on the pathways. And even though, as the last question indicated, these seem like very different cultures, why would you say, you know, different welfare states and many things like that, we are finding similar kinds of estimates, one data set collected prospectively, one retrospectively, in these two countries. And an, an additional area of concern is that, at least in the literature I've been reading, is that the prevalence of psychological disorders among children is actually not just, it, it's in partly a reporting bias that we're diagnosing children now and we didn't diagnose fathers in the past. Older though, but now we, we probably need to start saying maybe older diagnosing children. But there's also a real sense, I think, that family life and pressures on children when they're very young uh, make the childhood much harder than it used to be and are creating an atmosphere in which these problems are developing. And we don't seem to be doing a lot to uh, mitigate. So one of the things, and as, as I said, uh, one of the things that we're going uh, to do in the CSID is we put a retrospective <coughs> module in on childhood health. Now we want to develop and, and put a module in on why those psychological problems existed in the first place. And ask about the conditions and circumstances of the home and the schools that they were uh, in and their friendship networks whatever it is that are the critical factors uh, that affect uh, people's mental health during childhood is what we're going to this section. And I think, uh, again, in the CSID in particular, my interest was on the physical health side. The psychological part of the incident, the retrospective incident, questions about the psychological health. And I think it would be a good thing to go back into that and, and I'll try to take this short seminar. And we both agree that anxiety, leaving out anxiety during childhood and adolescence is really important. And we could have a much more expanded set of psychological conditions. I'm not getting to the really rare ones, but the relatively common ones that create difficulties for children and adolescents expand that list a great deal and what the nature of the psychological disorders are and then relate it to the disorder that exists in the world. And in Britain, we've taken the 58 cohorts that we need to expand analysis on the other cohorts, which is uh, especially the younger cohort in Britain, which would tell us what can happen to the language. likely to, have, to be well educated. So there are, there are income or family effects 
on, um, on the social economic outcomes you're looking at. But then when you go within family, you don't find that your, the measures you have of mental health, they are the things that impact, but go down. So that seems to me to say at least this dimension of where we're, through no malice of our own, messing up our kids, has nothing to do with SES. And I am just as guilty of this as is, you know, the, the, the poor mother in Detroit who's suffering and has no income. And in fact, what's striking about that is presumably I am in economically much less stressed than that woman in Detroit, but I'm not any more capable of bringing up a, health, a psychologically healthy child than she is. So this kind of, in that sense, in this global sense, I mean, I understand. And I actually uh, agree with you, John. <laughs> the, the, when you go through, you, this is not the true in the physical dimension. When you go through the uh, psychological dimension, which is, in the end, which is what you drive those politicians on self-reported, somebody uh, self-reported salary health, it's not socially great. The, these problems are just as likely to occur in wealthy families as in poor families. It's really interesting, and, and so I, I think you're right, calling for the kind of first order family effects uh, won't do much of the job in the So it's really a, a way of outside of my comprehension. If you start thinking about uh, an issue that you alluded to in one of the previous questions, you have a family all the issues in a family you have negative and poor. One child suffered these psychological disorders and another did not. And it, it, it's very common in the DSID to see uh, uh, it's not like this is a shared trait. Uh, this is you're, you're a little bit more likely to have a problem <laughs> as a problem, but not that much more likely. So I think the critical question is why this child, which is maybe why I think it might be hard to select the right retrospective data, why this particular child suffered. Now maybe there are cases where there was a divorce and they were before the divorce and this is during the divorce. Now, it, maybe it will turn out to be a simple fact. And I doubt it actually. I think it's not going to be a simple fact. Yeah, just a couple of observations along this line. I, I wouldn't necessarily jump to those conclusions too quickly for a couple of reasons. One is it's not obvious to me that the, that the measurement models are similarly specific. There, there's a fair bit of latitude in the measurement model of the early psychological problems. That what's actually getting measured, how closely they tie down to specific mental health issues, it seems to me to be up for grabs in terms of what we're getting at. So there, it seems to me there's a measurement model issue that's not completely resolved. More to the uh, point though, it seems to me that there's the issue of differential responses to stress, right? Uh, can be as easily uh, characterized within families as between families. So the, the amount of within family difference on stress vulnerability uh, it is as almost as large as the between family, right? So that, so that in effect, to say that these are somewhat independent sources, uh, yes, that, that's probably the case. And then the third thing, just you know, particularly on the British birth, birth cohort, there have been a number of studies that Chris Power and others have done to look at the factors that you've looked at as mediators between family-wide SES issues and later outcome things. And these do appear to operate, at least as I recall those findings, as mediators. And I've wondered if you've looked at it in that particular kind of a context. I haven't yet. Because uh, as I said, I haven't had these slow studies that you uh, raised either. So I mean, I'll just put on that question. So I actually do them. I said before, this is within the last few weeks on the uh, British cohort. But on, on the remarks you made before that, I, I, I think I basically agree with those remarks and think it is something about the child and why a, I mean, there are going to be some events that uh, are the, there's still going to be the triggering events, but they don't trigger all children the same way and they respond in very different ways. And these, these data sets, especially the British Coast data, which has to be done right now, we can get inside that. Yeah, I was thinking of these two questions that you're thinking of designing for the first ID and uh, the kind of why question. It strikes me as a hard thing. I mean, the, it's true that events might trigger a child, but I think the child should also trigger the event. So, for example, 
child that has trouble with bullying in school may not be the school the school effect so much as it is the child effect. And, and uh, although maybe some schools handle that kind of issue different, you know, better than other than other schools. So I, I I guess you might be finding attribution of where of where the where the problems were coming up, but I'm not sure that it answers the why question. Um, no, I'm not as pessimistic as you are. I just have to say, there are ways to characterize, and again, I think it's going to be family or school or also, but you stay within a family place. And there, it's whether the parents get along in some sense, talk civilly to each other, how much physical abuse there was in the family, or other kinds. You know, we, we, can, we can look at first order effects. Not as pessimistic as you, but the only way that I know is actually there. The schools are actually going to do this in Ireland as well, because in Ireland there have been, as I probably have read, really horrid tales of what happened in some of the schools in our country. And so this is a way of sort of measuring and directing that history and seeing what the consequences are uh, for those children. And it's sufficiently common uh, that you can actually use surveys. I may be wrong, but I'm not as pessimistic as you are. I'm not sure. Uh, I, uh, Go ahead. Yeah. I had a question uh, that Again, this is outside, there are probably experts in this room. This is out, and I have the same question as you have. This is enormous cost, which are understated by a lot. Can we do something? Is, it, is this like an incurable incur OP, like an incurable disease, like a thing? And I have now been in the process of talking to people who are experts, and the, the opinions vary, but some of them say we have the mechanism. We have the mechanisms in place right now that this would be unnecessary. There are uh, randomized controlled trials out there that show what an effective treatment would be. I'm not an expert enough on it to endorse or not endorse them, but they, it, it, it is not this uh, pessimistic, fatalistic view that nothing can be done about the problem of childhood and just let the child go through life. Hopefully, they'll get past it. Professions seem much more optimistic. We then raise the issue of why not we do this. If, if there are treatments out there that are effective, and these are the ones, we, we should be doing that. This is absurd. Yeah, I, I mentioned to Jim when we first talked before about Ron Kessler's work and 15 years ago when I first talked to Ron, he was convinced that early childhood psychiatric He was right. He would <laughs> like your results. But one of the things, so when we did our welfare panel, we went to him and said, what should we be measuring? And it was depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress, alcohol, and drugs. And in particular, I think this relates to John. In, at least in the welfare panel, with uh, Kessler's measure for post-traumatic stress, you asked, has this event ever happened to you? Fire, flood, or natural disaster, been abused as a child, somebody held a gun to you, et cetera. And so it very well could be, and, and in the welfare panel, the extent of this was very high. So it actually could be that things that we think of as factors associated with poverty, living in a violent neighborhood, are the triggers of some of that violence. Now, Ron's got two national samples, the one that I had used, the early comorbidity study, and the recent one, and he's done it in a lot of countries, so you can at least get Good. retrospective where you can say you've got a 
measure of early childhood disorder in, I don't know, 15 or so countries. 30. Uh, 30. 30. 30. <laughs> I mean, it was done it's at 30. ISR, so people it's care. No more about it. Turn your back on those things. <laughs> Similar types of large effects in um, that public. Uh, this is not an isolated kind of result. It's just a piece of some more case in the other direction. Have you had a chance to um, get access to any case studies? Associated with, I think we do know about attrition and PSAD in general. We know it to be low, but it's been around for a long time. So it doesn't seem to be systematically related to much, would be my belief. On the other hand, you know, with the big caveats, no one's looked at it at that particular outcome. Right? So it's certainly the case that if you're running into really severe psychological disorders as a result, I would think that you, this is not the way you want to spend your time. <laughs> but that's conjecture, so I don't know that. But that's, that's a good thought. And I think the trouble is right now we, we don't know the early condition. So this is all that retrospectively. So they're, all, they're gone already. You can do it in the, uh, the British one. So I can look at whether attrition, and there's, there's considerable attrition in the public study, was, was predicted by this. Just one other observation, you were looking at 16 back, and I think, again, from Kessler's work, uh, uh, the onset of some of the more serious mental disorders is actually late teens, yeah. early 20s. So you know, I think these are yeah. underestimates. So I, I stopped it at, uh, at 16. So the teen years, we would capture. We do, you know, we know the, uh, the, the reported onset. Right. And yeah. Certainly the psychological disorders are more common among current data show, but um, 
think you're right again in retrospect and if i had to do it all over again and we had to do it all over again we might have gone to slightly earlier you know phase starting adults are uh, at age 25 you know my job is an adult some of you also know my daughter uh, <laughs> the uh but taking that out to college uh, that that just seems like such a sense Physical health is important, but the real uh, uh, the reason I say that is somehow we, in doing those research in this group, we still should do, we've lost track of something else that is really important. Right. And in certain terms of economic outcome, it's probably more important. So, yeah, let me so let me, that. Okay, that, that's good. Important. So let me, one estimate, if I, the slide's going up fast, but in the, in the, the first cohort studies, I thought, yeah, you had, you had looked at the effects of the first wave, which is the variable that kind of Parker and other journals look at pretty frequently, especially in hypothesis. I think the prevalence, you reported that 10% for the same psychological, and the effects were smaller, but not a whole lot smaller. And especially they were significant. Well, they, were, they were significant. And they were 10 I put about there, I put about there for two years. <laughs> but they, they also have a later life onset. So it's this combination. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's not just the size of the effect. So maybe if I measured all these effects at age 65, they'd be having an equal fight. Right. Right. But it's the fact that the psychological dimension starts at age 25. And most people are pretty healthy right. in, on the physical side. And that extra 30 years, which are early years, you know, when we do discounts of present value, it matters, it matters more if it happens at 25. Right. Right. So that's what's going on. Right. I, I, again, you, you corrected me. Just to add on to that, so the top 10 uh, on the global burden of disease, because of this early age of onset and it's chronic, five of them are related to um, uh, mental health. Good. So okay. it's, it, it fits. Uh, I may be kind of off on my, my evaluation here because I'm thinking more about the economic literature that's gone into the early relationship between early onset and later life. I think that literature has been neglecting something that's very important. Yeah. That, I, I feel on the safety on that. And just I mean, for policy reasons, I understand the mental health versus physical health analysis dimension. In terms of mechanisms, though, that may be not entirely a great division, simply because what might be showing up as mental health problems are neurodevelopmental issues that have arisen from a variety of early kinds of stress models which are themselves uh, physical, and biological, embedded, biologically embedded in their origins. It's just that it's like the canary in the mind. Yeah, they show up on neurodevelopmental things it's first. A, you know, there's a physical dimension in the mind. There's no question about that. And you know, I think it also opens up um, some, I think, really interesting. Some of it's benign. If I was going to look for gene environment interaction effects, I would be looking at these uh, psychological these are so kind of so early. We, we, I think we, we, we people claim to know what the gene is, and if you then look at the environmental insults, 